Hello, welcome back to Inspired Express and User Operation. So far, we've taken a look at the software layout and hopefully you have a good feel for where things are in the software. Now, we are going to create a new project. We are in My Projects, if you don't remember how we got there. In the Workspace area here, you just double click on My Projects. And here we are in My Projects. And we're going to start by creating a new project. To create a new project, it's really simple. All you have to do is right click to bring up the right click menu here and you click on New Project. And you just select your aspect ratio for whatever you want the project to be. And we're gonna go with a 16 by nine and choose that. And all right, there we got a new 16 by nine project. And it appears here as new project. We can actually rename that. You just right click and click rename. Let's just name this something that's a little more identifiable. Let's call this AMX test sign. And there we go, AMX test sign. And just double click on it. And that'll open our project in a new tab. And all that appears in a new project is an index file. This is the file that will be playing on the player. Now we could just create our sign directly here in our index file, but what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to create a new file. And this new file is where we're going to put all of our different sign elements. Now there's a reason we're going to do that. The reason we're going to create a new file rather than putting everything in our index file is because that makes our sign more portable. As our sign grows, and if we want to create new parts of our sign that's going to play at different points, it's going to be much easier to move all of our content if it's in a file that's separate from our main index file. And so rather than having to rename or mess with anything like that, if we just put it in another file and then just drag and drop it into the index file, everything will work a lot easier. All we have to do to do that is again right click and click on where it says new SVG file. An SVG file, in this case, is a layers file. It's just a dynamic SVG file that has different layers and lets us lay out different items on our screen. And we just click New SVG File, pick our aspect ratio. Again, we want 16 by 9. We could have a 4.3 aspect ratio SVG file and put it into our 16 by 9 if we wanted that aspect ratio or whatever we wanted. But we're just going to do 16 by 9. There we go. New 16 by 9.svg. So again, we click that, right click, rename. And let's just name this main.svg, because this is going to be our main sign. And we just double click that to open it. And there we go, we have our new main.svg file open. The only thing that appears in the file when we open it is this bit of instructional text. We don't need it, so all you have to do to get rid of that is hover over it, right click, and do delete. And there we go, it's disappeared. Now we've got a blank SVG. To start out, we probably need a background. That's probably a good place to start. So let's go back, click this to create a new tab, and that opens us back at our workspace page. Let's go into templates. And remember where we had backgrounds? Let's go to backgrounds. And 16 by 9, pick the right aspect ratio. And here's all of our 16 by 9 backgrounds. We have all these different backgrounds that we could use for background. I'm just going to use this Aquarius. I like that. So just select it, and then just drag it on the screen. And you just let go, and there we go, it appears. It didn't appear as full screen, so to make it full screen, just right click and click full screen. Now this is an SVG file, and SVG files, in this case, are image files. And uh, this is a vector image file that has been created. SVG is an open source format of vector images, and you can use programs like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape to create these SVGs. There are different programs that you can use to create SVG files like this and create your own, but we're just using one here, and it'll stretch. And because it's vector, it'll stretch without any pixelation or any other sort of issues. So there we go, we got a background file. Now that we have a background, let's add some images. We're going to add several images in here, so let's create a new folder to hold all of our images. A folder in this case is a collection. Do new collection and that'll create a new folder and we're going to put all of our images in here. And you just click that and rename. And let's just call this TP Images because this is going to be a collection of images of touch panels. And open that. And there we go, TP Images. Now there's nothing in here right now but we're going to open up some images and uh, put them in here. All right, we have a folder open with some images in it. And all we're going to do to import these images is we just highlight them, and then we just drag them in. You want to make sure you drag them in here into the Explorer area and let go. And that'll just import them directly into that folder and it's that easy. 
And there we go, we've got all of our images right there in our project folder ready to use. Now we can use any of these images, put it on here, but let's just use this 5200i, that's a good picture. Now if you notice, there's not the plus sign we saw before, there's actually an arrow and this dotted line appeared around the outside of our background. Well, what that means is that's going to replace whatever's highlighted. In this case, it's going to replace that background image with this touch panel image if I let go right now. But I can paste a new layer. All I have to do to turn this from replace into uh, import a new layer is just to press control. And see how that went from an arrow to a plus sign? Now it is going to be add new layer. Plus, meaning add new layer. And there we go. We have our touch panel right there, and we can position it. Now this box, if you see here, it says preserve aspect ratio. Because that's selected, this is going to not stretch or skew, but it's going to maintain its aspect ratio, no matter how wide I stretch it, which is good, because we don't want it to skew or anything at this point. We could, if we wanted to, we could deselect that and select some different things to make this skew how we want, but uh, we want this to maintain its aspect ratio. It's a good idea to go ahead and make this the size that you want to fill on the screen. Because if we replace this with a different type of picture, if we have this already set to the maximum amount of space we've allotted for this picture on the screen, then that other picture will appear and take up that same amount of space. Another thing to take note is if you have fly-ins or other sort of effects, the limits of the bounds of the fly-ins are going to be the bounds of this effect. We're going to do some effects on some of these images later to fly in from the right. And so since I know I'm going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and stretch or move this over to the side of the image. And so that way they'll appear like they're coming in from the corner of the sign. All right, now that we have an image, the next thing we're going to do is to add a video. And let's just add our video directly in here to the main part of the screen. And adding a video, it's just as easy as adding in a picture. Again, we'll just open images, which is where our show reel video is and we're just going to click that, and then again, just drag that into the area, and it'll import. You can just press OK. And our video is there, right here. And to add it on the screen, again, all you have to do is click and drag and drop. The dotted lines appear, and you see the arrow. Well, that's going to replace this, so we want to press Control. So we have the plus sign again, a plus for Add New Layer. And there we go, there's our video, and we can see it playing. Now, if we don't want to watch it playing while we're adjusting it, can press pause, and again, we're going to make it the entire width that we want it to take up on the screen. That looks good. Let's maybe move over just a little bit. And there we go. Now we have a video and an image, and it uh, didn't take us any time at all. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a logo. I'm going to add the AMX University logo. Now the AMX University logo that I'm going to add in here is just an SVG file. Now again, I used a software program and exported it as SVG and was able to create this. And I just drag and drop, just like I've done before. And again, we just drag it on, press Control, and let go. And there we see our logo. And we can put that to the corner. And to make that a little smaller, so it's a little big. And we have our AMX University logo there as an SVG file. The last thing I think we're going to do is let's create a text layer. To do that, all you have to do is click this little T with a plus sign, and that's Add New Text Layer. And there we go, we see our new text layer. And you just make it the size you want. You double click to edit. Let's just say, welcome to Inspired Express. Okay, well that's black, so that's kind of hard to see. So let's just adjust the font color to white. And maybe make the whole thing bold here. Let's still make the Inspired Express stand out a little more, so let's adjust the font on that one. Let's use Impact. There we go, we can see that a little better. Welcome to Inspired Express. It was that easy. It wasn't hard at all to create our sign, and we have basic text, photos, videos, and everything here. Didn't take us any time at all to create that. Make sure you save. Let's actually do one more thing before we are ready to import to our sign. If you remember, we still haven't put our main.svg into our index file, so you want to be sure you don't forget to do that. So to do that, open your index.svg, delete your instructions that you don't need, and drag this onto here, and let go. And right click, full screen, and it's ready, and it'll play, and we have a basic sign with text and images, and it didn't take us any time at all to create, and we're ready. Just click Save. And I think we're done with our project for the moment. Well, let's open one more tab here. 
and to go to My Devices. Now this is all you have to do to add your project into your device. It's really simple. All you have to do is select the project you want under My Projects and you click it and you hold it down and you drag over it. Now if you notice if I click over that tab it'll select the tab I want and then I just hover over the device that I'm wanting to drag it onto and I see that plus sign that means I'm wanting to add this onto that device and let go. And it's now publishing my project to that device. Okay, we're done. Now if we go into our device, I double clicked it to open it, and you can see here our project appears. And you can see it. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to edit this project and republish. And it's real easy once you've published once to republish, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video.